Hey guys, so in this video we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, why do so many programmers have problems with object-oriented programming? So let's get into it. Well, um, that is a very good question. Uh, it's a very subjective question or the answer that I'm going to give is very subjective because hey, it's why people have problems with object-oriented programming. I mean, there's no universal answer to this, but I think I can give you some insight into the most common problems with object-oriented programming. And the most common problem that I see is the dependency help, uh, or rather the inheritance problems that people get themselves into, where you have objects connect, uh, you have a long inheritance chain. That's usually how it starts. And by the end, in a large system, you have all of these really weird classes that need to... Well, they depend on each other. It becomes this weird spiderweb, spiderweb of dependencies all over the place, basically. And that very quickly becomes a, becomes a very un wheely way of working my favorite well my least favorite thing to uh, to find is that you have a fairly deeply nested tree of logic and in order to like i mean if you're going if you're somewhere half halfway down in between the where the the network request comes in and like the actual response of that network request depending on how many layers of abstractions you have you can find it very very tricky to actually modify code because you have you have these all these classes that are interconnected and now you really need to make sure that you can pass through the stuff that you need or that you can extend what you need in order to somewhere mid down have access to the logic that you're actually requiring in order to execute whatever function or functionality that it is that you are working on. So I, that's kind of my thinking about it because that's the thing that I usually see in an ugly quote unquote OOP or object oriented programming code base. You simply have to, like you have a long inheritance chain and you have all these interconnections between, between objects or classes. So the way that I try to mitigate this is to have a fairly shallow inheritance tree. I mean, it's uh, having like a really, really long one isn't all that useful. It's something like, uh, it, to me, the way that I, the thing that I think is truly a mistake, which is something that, I, one of the few things that I still feel that I was, I, back in my school days, I had this argument with my teacher. And even to this day, I, I, I mean, I've realized that a lot of stuff that he used to say is absolutely true, that this is, the one, is one of the things that I still don't think that he was correct about. And there is this notion within object-oriented program, object programming that all of the logic that is associated with an entity within the system should be on the class. And I don't agree with that because something that I find, I find very frustrating is that a class that represents an entity of some sort very commonly becomes this bucket with code that has all this functionality and especially where you know you you could actually just keep it as a static function there's nothing in my world there's nothing wrong with putting like having utility classes that can actually execute logic in a very like that's more of a functional programming paradigm if you will but what's beautiful about that is that a function is just a function. It has no external, like if you do it correctly, there, sh there should be no external dependencies to that function. And that means that you can kind of plug it in wherever you want. There are no dependencies. You don't have to, I mean, if you've ever written a unit test for a large, a, a, for in an object-oriented code base, especially if you have a lot of nested models, you will know that there are almost, like, I mean, if you want to test one method on one class, it's like fifth, at least 50 lines of boilerplate that needs to be created in order to just execute logic on that one thing. And that is something that is, it's, uh, it's, that's not a very nice experience to work with, whereas if your logic actually resided inside of, this sim uh, of, inside of this pure utility function where you simply pass in the dependencies you have, you can mitigate a lot of that by, well, I mean, there's no, 
you don't have to instantiate half of your code base in order to just get that logic to, to, to test that logic. And it also, in my world, helps quite a bit with this interdependency problem where you have all these different classes that are well, connected to each other or depend on each other. And then you find out that, hey, you have a circular dependency somewhere here. Now you need to move that logic somewhere else. So that is one aspect of it. The other aspect is that I think that you should be very careful with trying to model your, like there's this concept called domain driven design, where the idea is that you have a domain or a problem domain of some sort and you try to model your classes after that domain using, you know, nouns such as product, user, etc, etc. To, to create your classes and now that is all that's and the problem here is that most people make a mental mistake where they try to fit everything within their problem domain into that model that works very well at small scale because you usually only have a very simple system at small scale where you can fit everything all the needs that you have into this one single model but when the system grows to be really really large the most common thing i see is that a lot of people create handlers things of this nature like a user handler or user request handler or like these inter like these cross-cutting concern type of things where they're still trying to apply the same mentality the same logic or try they're trying to fit everything into this domain model but it doesn't really fit so they're trying to force it to fit into that model instead of doing as i said uh, to instead of having this more pragmatic mindset where all right so you have a concern or you have a need to express something but it doesn't fit into the model that you have then maybe it is something that cannot be fitted into that model so instead of having it on one of the classes you can create a service you can create some type of abstraction or a helper method where this logic can actually live because in my world it isn't vital for the cleanliness of the project to keep everything strictly in the domain model you can absolutely you can be pragmatic about this so what i want you to take away from this is that the most common things that i see people having problems with in object-oriented programming is the inheritance where you know you have a very long inheritance chain, chain and all that is really required in order to mess all that code up is to have some need to change the one of the more like the higher up classes and all of a sudden the all of this pro all these problems kind of cascade down on you and then you have of course tons and tons and tons of interconnections between the different classes where in order to instantiate one single class you may have a problem of instantiating maybe th three or four other classes i mean they have their own dependencies and all that boilerplate is needed for every single unit test and it creates a lot of hassle when you want to change your like the behavior in a lot of your different like in your different models and the way i mean there isn't really a good way like a universal way to solve this problem this is one of the inherent problems with object-oriented programming as we do it today but the way to mitigate it in my world is to to do it through either services where you have specific classes that are responsible for executing logic on your different your different models that keeps things a little bit flatter and having that i mean and having this mindset where you know if you have the need to express something that doesn't fit into your domain uh, your your domain or that design i think that it, you should consider using say a static function to just or a pure static function to execute that logic because i don't think it's a good idea to be a complete purist when it comes to programming regardless of if it's functional programming or object-oriented programming have a great day